He real. What's good? My man. I'll call you Dr. Green Thumb throughout the interview, oh, but also be real from that's, Cypress Hill. That's good with me. Because you know so many younger kids don't know, and that's why we say hip hop don't know you. Um, two part question, real quick to get into it. How'd you get the name Be Real, and how'd you get the name Dr. Green Thumb? Be Real, um, it came when I was, <laughs> I wasn't uh, doing too much music at that time. Uh, I started gang banging and whatnot, and I was the young buck in the neighborhood, and you know, it's a number of ways you can get your name. <laughs> the way I got my name was, um, you know, I did one of my first get downs and with my neighborhood, and you know, the deal was, you know, we had to go and splash a roll call on our rival neighborhood's wall. So we went down there. I did not tag because my penmanship and my canmanship was not that great. <laughs> but you know, I had heart, so you know, I was there as backup in case any rivals to jump off and I didn't really they didn't really call me anything yet because I was fairly new to the neighborhood still I was like a Mexican banging with you know black homies you know it was a blood gang you know and uh, one of my homies said, what you want on, what you want on the wall blood and I, you know I'm like stuck right there because <laughs> I'm, I'm the young buck he's fuck it we gonna call you be real put my name up and stuck with me ever since Wow. Um, and where did Dr. Green Thumb come from? Dr. Green Thumb came, came um, you know, because it was a, a loose name that, that we called each other as growers, you know. And, uh, you know, I started to write the song. Uh, we were, we were um, I can't remember which album. I think it was four, maybe four Stone Raiders. One of those two albums Dr. Green Thumb is on. And uh, the beat came. You know, Muggs played me the beat and he left the studio and within like 20 minutes I had wrote this, written this song called Dr. Green Thumb. And, you know, I thought it would be cool for it to be, you know, another persona for me later on, you know? Nice. And where'd the name Cypress Hill come from? Cypress Hill, um, you know, we were, uh, we lived in, in this um, town called Southgate. It's on the Lower East Side of Los Angeles. There's a... Uh, there was a street called Cypress Ave. Sen Dog and his younger brother Mellow Man Ace lived on Cypress Avenue. When we met Muggs, Muggs was, you know, fresh from Flushing Queens. You know, he's living that's in- where I'm come, That's where I come from. Yeah, he, is, he, he, he moved from Flushing Queens to Bell Gardens. And he was giving us our first real taste of other East Coast hip hop shit that, you know, wasn't really being played on the radio. Because on KDAY, we were hearing Run DMC, Curtis Blow, Houdini and other stuff like that, but we're hearing all the stuff that didn't make radio play and Muggs, you know, he was like a break dancer turning into a DJ at this point. So he, he would show us all these records and one came um, that was called Wild Style, which you know very well. Exactly. And a rapper named Ramel Z was mm -hmm. battling K-Rob or he was doing a, a solo song. He had two, two records on this. This, uh, this album. One was battle, battle, battling with K-Rob and one was something that he did on his own. And he mentioned uh, uh, a line, I shot up town to Cypress Hill and I broke into a deaf Seville, something like that. And we're like, Cypress Hill, you know? That, you know, it sounds like Cypress Avenue, but like, you know, we'll add the hill. And so that's how we came up with the name. And people in New York thought we were from Cypress Hill up Brooklyn. there, Brooklyn. Yeah, up in Brooklyn. And, you know, our DJ was flush in Queens, so we did have an East Coast connection, but I think that's why we won a lot of East Coast people over in the beginning, because they thought we were some cats from over there, because the music sounded like that, even though the lingo and some of the terminology was like kind of East Coast, but West Coast, a little bit of mi a, a mix. Right. And uh, that's, how, that was, that's how it came down, you know? And oddly enough, with this rapper, Ram LZ, who he became a big artist, you know, um, exactly. abstract and stuff like that. Well, you know very right. well, a lot of these people right. might not. He did a style um, of rap that was different at the time. He would rap like this, and blah, 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 and then he would go into it, yeah, broken to my, my, very my. Unique. you know, yeah. like very unique. So he had a high and low voice, and I thought, you know, that's what, inf that was one of the things that influenced me to go up on a higher range on my vocal pitch, rather than to rap like I'm talking right here, right now. So, you know, shout out to Rap Melzay. I know he passed away. And yeah, rest in peace. As far as rappers go, man, ASAP Ferg's one of my favorites. Amazing. He, like, he just finds a way to, like, come with different styles. Even, you know, like, from the look 
to, to how he spits it. He's, he's one of my favorites. I like Wiz. You know, he dares to be different. And I like that shit. You know, most rappers will put themselves in a box to try to be the image of what Tupac and Biggie were. Mostly Pac, because, you know, Biggie's hard to, to, to replicate his image. You have to be a certain dude to, to, to replicate the image of Biggie. Pac, you know, they found a way to cookie cut his image. And there's a lot of that shit out there. And, and, and you know, that's, that's what I like about Ferg and guys like Ferg, you know, is that they do different shit. They're not trying to be in that image. They're trying to do different shit. Right. You know, it's so funny, we were talking about Jam Master J off the camera. Jam Master J, one of his sons, is the official DJ for ASAP Ferg. That's a move right there. Crazy, right? I also like Joey Badass. Yeah. Because he's, you know, he's like, um, he's not necessarily doing the trap shit that everybody else is doing. He's doing more traditional hip hop, but it's like new. You know, it sounds like right now. Right. And, and, and he's a dope rapper too, you know right. what I'm saying? So. so there's a lot of Cypress, you know, Hill fans. You know, I've been to so many of your shows and I'm um, gonna watch this interview. Your top favorite three songs that you've done? Well, How I Could Just Kill a Man, that's off the top. Mm. I mean, that, mm. you know, the way Muggs put the beats together on that, and he actually produced me on the vocals. It, you know, it wasn't like one of those typical songs, okay, write the verses, all right, let's go. Write, write the chorus, let's go. Like he, you know, we actually all pieced that song together and he directed like a producer would. And, and uh, so that's, that's one of my favorites. Um, now, everybody would expect me to say Insane in the Brain at some point, but I mean, it's, it's a great song and that was the one that, that like propelled us. But like for me, you know, it was, it, was, it was a hit and it was great and I love doing that song, I love playing it. But realistically, I like Dr. Green Thumb a little bit more than Insane in the Brain because it, it was an underdog song, Muggs fucking rolled a hard ass beat on there that was comparable to Insane in the Brain. And Sony, you know, wanted me to change it to an Insane in the Brain style song, but I wouldn't. I kept it as, as Dr. Green Thumb I didn't know what it would do for us later, but I knew it was, it, was, it was something that our fans would fuck with, and it became a cult classic for us, and that's one of the songs I, I definitely love. And it created a whole other persona for me, you know, outside of Cypress Hill, even though it, it was birthed from Cypress Hill. Um, another one would be, um, uh, I'd say, um, we ain't going out like that. You know, because, <laughs> The, 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 the elements that made that song, T-Ray produced this song for us, and, you know, because on all Cypress Hill albums, Muggs allowed one producer to do one song, you know, and uh, because we gave him rain on that, that was... And why was that? Why do you think he was doing that? Well, we wanted our sound to be our sound, and, and, and we don't want the shit to be a, an assortment of beats. We wanted, like, Muggs very much um, focused on giving Cypress a sound and he didn't want nothing to break that so you know he chose who he thought would you know either give us something that's like our sound but like their version of it or something close or whatever and he felt like you know he was working with T-Ray he felt like T-Ray got it and with that we ain't going out like that shit you know that the bass line was driving and then the, the Black Sabbath elements that are in there. It was just, cause that was who we were. It was dark, it was aggressive and uh, ominous, all that shit, you know? And that's, that's very much who we were at that time. And, and uh, I thought he hit it in the head. And, and that song before Rock Superstar came along um, was our closeout song. We would end the set with that song. And whenever we'd end the set with that song, it was just fucking pandemonium. Coming at the 